It's Friday Night Frenzy, brought to you by Junction Square Pizza. Come on in, ladies and gentlemen. It is week three on the Western Slope, and it is Friday Night Frenzy. Ooh, He's wait. Titus Cleveland. And I'm Big Will Levins in another great night of action, folks. We've got four games to get to, and Titus, you were up in rifle for a two-way state championship rematch. Yeah, well, it was, first of all, the drive there was magnificent. Just to see Beautiful. the mountains, Beautiful. oh my, I loved it. Also, I was driving safe because those turns, very dangerous, um, which is why Not I easy. got there a little late, to be honest. Three minutes late, but I still captured everything, man. Will, this game, the rematch game from last year, it was so impressive. I could tell you how great it was, but I'd rather show you. Let's get to those highlights. And like I said, the rematch from last year's championship game between the Delta Panthers and Rifle Bears. And folks, first half of this game was all Panthers as Tyree and Nate So led the way for Delta. Well, I arrived at this game, like I said, three minutes after kickoff. And as I was walking to the field, Tyree got right to business, driving immediately down the field to get on board first. And then immediately, Reed goes on defense and comes up with an interception, giving the ball back to Delta. In the first half alone, Reed threw for three touchdowns and came up with two interceptions. And then senior running back Nate So would not be denied as the Rifle Bears had a hard time containing the senior running back. And overall, man, the Delta Panther squad is for real. And they are looking to get back to that championship game as they push their record to two and one on the season. Because if we just look at the score right now, they won 49 to zero in the championship rematch. Will, this team looks like the real deal. You know, they lost that first game to Palisade in a Good bizarre game. way on, on almost a Hail Mary. Ever since then, two dominant wins. I don't think anyone's really surprised with how Delta looked up in rifle. Not the year we've expected for the rifle bears thus far, but Delta, they are a wagon once again with that quarterback, Tyree, exactly. back in action. But let's take you down to Corntown, Olathe, where the Olathe Pirates were in search of their first varsity win in over a decade. The Bobcats of Ignacio went down. This place was buzzing for the first Olathe home game in two years. First drive for the Bobcats. Zane Pontine flutters into the end zone and making a terrific leaping grab is Gabe Archuleta. So it's Ignacio who strikes first. It's 7-0. The problem for Olathe, they couldn't possess the ball because Ignacio kept fooling the Pirates with onside kicks. So Ignacio gets it right back and it's Devonte Montoya with the speed for the Bobcats extending it across the goal line touchdown two drives two scores for Ignacio Aletha trails 14 nothing and after another three and out for Aletha how do you get a spark Titus special teams special teams special teams special teams it's a muffed punt for Ignacio and a gift for Aletha's there in business and the Pirates make good use of that gift because on the very next play Jaden Estrada finds a lane and finds the end zone just like that Aletha's back in it it's 14 to 7 but back come the Bombcats. It's a flip over the middle to a receiver with space and speed and Archuleta down to the races and what a block. I mean that is textbook as Archuleta flies home for six. A huge touchdown for Ignacio as they extend the lead. It's 21 to 7 and well Olathe desperate for the football back. They are fooled once again. Another onside kick, another recovery for Ignacio. You can't win games without the football folks and Ignacio did not waste time breaking this one open as number seven who is not on the roster is loose and he scores with ease as the Bobcats running away from the Pirates take a 27 to 7 lead near halftime and after the Olathe Rock Band performed at halftime the Bobcats would take tack on one more score in the second half as they get the win 34 to 7. Olathe will have to wait a few more weeks to see a home win, their first home win in half a decade. The Pirates are off a couple weeks. They don't play until October when North Fork will be in town on the fourth. But let's get, it, get you to Stoker Stadium where the Palisade Bulldogs welcomed Resurrection Christian. And Palisade, an offense that doesn't throw it much, completely fools the defense with the deep pass. And there to make the ground, ladies and gentlemen, is Nathan Umberger, of course, the son of CDOT worker Trent Umberger, who, who tragically lost his life after being struck by a vehicle last week. And what a special moment for Nathan. This right here is why we play sports. And after the dogs added another score, Resurrection Christian, they hit pay dirt to cut into Palisades lead. It's 14-6 Bulldogs. And Coach Joe Romano says, who needs a triple option? We got a quarterback who can sling it. And boy, did Branson sling, Springer sling it. Moving around, 
and making plays. And how about another big grab for Nathan Umberger? Have a night, young man. And check this out for Springer. Rolling to his right and throwing an absolute dime over two defenders. Are you kidding me? Easton Embry makes the grab, but unfortunately, this was called back for an eligible man downfield. A tough break for the Bulldogs, but it didn't matter. Palisade and a surprisingly balanced attack through the air, through the ground, and some great defense as well. They get the big win, 20-6. Watch out for the dogs. They are two and one. Truly a special moment right there for the Umberger family, for the yeah. entire Palisade community. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah, well, they, they've definitely been playing like a team that's for that moment, that can play in those big moments. They played Delta in that first game. They showed up, came back and won 30 to 27. They just showed out there at Stoker, uh, Stoker Stadium. I think Palisade can be something to, uh, something to look forward to down the line. You weren't here last year. They only had three wins last year. It looks like a plain different group. They are here to play. We knew their first three games were tough. To get out of that with two and one, a two and one record is pretty special. But we're going to get to a game from last night at Stoker Stadium. The Central Warriors welcomed the Devils of Eagle Valley. And on the first drive for the Devils ball, is overthrown and folks that ball went backward that is a live football it's just sitting in the end zone until quentin gray falls on it for the touchdown it does not get much easier than that next drive and it's dom colasimo who has picked it off and colasimo is off to the races down the sideline and all the way home and so thanks to their defense central leads it 14 nothing and the warriors just kept making plays on defense Gray is there for the sack now. Man, all over the place are these Warriors. Keaton Lake rolling left for Eagle Valley across his body, and it's the quarterback, Asher Carter, with the big interception. The Warriors would have three interceptions in this first half, but it was the miscues on offense, especially in the red zone, that just didn't allow them to add on the lead as Central leads it 14 0 at the half. And the Warriors finally figured it out on offense in the second half. They put up 34 points on the board, two touchdowns. In that second half for Asher Carter and Dom Colasimo actually had an, another pick six in the second half. Truly a dominant defensive performance for Central as they get a key victory, their first victory of the season. But we got to get to some more scores, Titus, across mm -hmm. the state because two big local teams in the Grand Valley were on the front range, starting with the Grand Junction Tigers. And Titus, look at this. The Tigers, oh. they can't be stopped. Oh man, that looks impressive. I love it. Like I think I think it's the new school, which is why they're having so much success. They have to back it up. They have a nice venue, a nice gymnasium, and there that's why you see them 3-0 right now because they put in the work. Everything feels different at Grand Junction oh, High yeah. School, right? As you mentioned, the new school, the new facilities, mm -hmm. and they're playing ball like we haven't seen in in 5 years, in 6 years. I mean, this is a team that we said can make the playoffs and now with this roster that's ex as experienced as it is with a quarterback like Will Applegate that just can't be stopped and the speedy receivers on the outside. The Grand Junction Tigers are going to be tough to beat, but who do they play next week? Well, they play the team that went on the road tonight and didn't have their best performance against the spectacular Chaparral team. Of course, the new 5A opponents, it's going to make things a lot tougher for the Wildcats and Clearly, we're seeing how difficult it is to play the best schools, the best that this state has to offer in Class 5. They, as Chaparral gets the blowout victory, 30 to nothing over Fruita. But Fruita got a chance to make amends next week. Because, Titus, we have got a game for the ages. Friday Night Frenzy next week is going to be fun because mm -hmm. the rivalry night, the, the one we've been waiting for, it's Grand Junction at 3-0 and and the 5A Fruita Wildcats mm -hmm struggling a bit who's going to be their quarterback some questions with the wildcats you know we're used to seeing fruta dominate and handle grand junction right. what will happen this year it could be completely different well well so far you when i went out to some of these games you've been spot on with the games and who would come to come out and win victorious i'm going to ask you right now who do you have coming out on top in this game grand well, junction or fruit you know it's hard for me right because I, I love both schools i love what they both represent and of course with the new brand, brand new grand junction high school but I've been on the Tigers all season. I told you before the year they were going to surprise you. This was a team built to win football games, and I think the Tigers do it. I think they pull off the upset. That place is going to be rocking. There's going to be blue on one side, lots of orange and black on the other side. They're going to be packing that place. The students are going to be fired up. I cannot wait for that one, Titus. We are so close. A week away, Grand Junction and Fruita. Give me the Tigers to win that game. Either way, okay. it's going to be a it's close Friday, one at night, Stoker Stadium, but that wraps up our show. Friday Night Frenzy here from Grand Junction.
Thanks for joining us and don't just have a good weekend, have a wonderful weekend.